Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a gorgeous table centerpiece or mantle decoration using crepe paper from our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com. I'm gonna start off by painting this um, pretty wine bottle that I got from my husband for Christmas while well, I had wine in it. And, and I actually used a heat tool to remove the labels and I saved one of them because I thought it'd be kind of pretty maybe to even decorate the bottle with later. Isn't that lovely? Um, so what I'm gonna use for this is chalk paint. And I'm gonna set aside this branch. I collected a few from my yard and um, I'm just gonna put that in my crepe paper aside for now and begin on the bottle. I have a custom color that I mixed that's um, actually pretty thick so hopefully it'll spread on my glass all right. I did just wash my, um, oh isn't that pretty, I just washed my bottle with uh, dish soap and I'm just gonna spread this on and then I might actually wipe a little bit off to distress it afterwards. Okay, my bottle's dry and I wanted to distress it and there's two ways you can do this with the chalk paint. You can either sand some of the paint off of the bottle and then whatever is on the inside will show through or you could use a little um, brown paint or I've got this actual um, wax. It's a, uh, the just the furniture home decor wax here and I am just gonna just have a tiny little brush, bit on this brush and I'm just gonna kind of put a little here and there. Not a bunch, just to kind of you just hit some of the areas just to give it kind of like a uh, kind of like it's been sitting out in the pottery shed all all winter type of look. I like that brown and robin's egg. I think it's pretty. You could also even speckle this. I think this would be really pretty like on a table in a, a tray of eggs like uh, plastic Easter eggs or even um, wooden eggs that have been painted, they'd be really pretty, but I just want to have a little bit of distressing on there. It, it'll look nice in my living room, I think, this way. So don't overdo it just a little bit. I might have even done a little too much. If you do get too much on there, you can take a rag and wipe some off before it dries. Wipe it, wipe a little bit off there. You could, and if you're not sure if you like it, you could actually seal the, um, the bottle with like a matte sealer, and then you'd have a lot more flexibility as far as wiping the paint off um, if you don't like it. Now we're gonna move on to making the flowers and we are gonna use crepe paper and I think tissue paper would also work really well for this. Um, tissue paper would be a little bit lighter and you don't have as much versatility as far as molding the flowers. But I'm gonna show you um, how I do this with crepe paper. I like to start off by cutting a width of that's about um, four inches wide. And if you want smaller flowers, uh, cut smaller here. These are gonna make about one inch long flowers. I just kind of follow the line on one of the one of the uh, crepes there to do that. And then I'm gonna cut this in half so I have two inch wide strips. All right, and I'm gonna just stack it up one on top of the other and cut off two inch wide strips. So basically, um, you're going to have two inch by two inch squares. And so even though crepe paper is thicker than tissue paper, you can still cut a bunch of, uh, a bunch of these flowers at once. Like that would be, that I could cut that whole stack at once. And so making these flowers is actually quite quick and easy. Okay, but if you do have a hard time cutting through that entire stack, then then cut through half of it. Don't don't force yourself to break your scissors or hurt your hands or anything. Why don't I just take half the stack there? I cut the other ones, the whole stacks together, but I think you can probably actually get a nicer, nicer cut if you cut it separately. So what I basically want to do, I'll draw it on this top one just so you can see. I wouldn't really want to do this on um, on one I was going to use because you'll have like a weird edge, but basically this is the shape I'm going to cut. Okay, because Forsythia has this, uh, this four lobed kind of long floppy flowers. You can look online and, and find a uh, find photos. You can actually make a template and just trace that template each time or just even hold a template in place like if you had a nice uh, cardstock one and then just keep it. Keep it in. I keep a folder of just templates that are handy so I can just um, take them out and trace them whenever I want. I'll keep like funny things too like um, french fry boxes or you know any packaging that or even junk mail. Sometimes you get cool junk mail like a shaped card and it just looks really neat. Um, I'll save all that stuff in my template folder and then uh, it just gives me some ideas for other projects. Okay, so there, this whole stack. So you want to repeat that with all the other ones. I would discard that top one or use it for another template because it's got the color around the edge. And then to make the flowers, it's very easy. You just want to kind of, I like to kind of stretch out these petals so they get kind of like a little bit of a cupped shape. 
Okay, it just gives them a more like realistic petal look. And then I kind of push my thumb down into the middle and kind of grip it and then just twist that bottom together. Let's do it again. First, we shape our petals. And don't worry about them being perfect. You, these are, you're gonna have a ton of these on a branch out of a jar. Nobody's gonna notice if you have an imperfect flower. Okay, I'm just gonna try to gather them up so they all kind of cup around each other like that. Give them a twist at the bottom and then just fluff out your leaves. Okay, to attach them to a branch is also very easy. I've got one started right here and I am simply going to get a hot glue gun and I'm going to figure, I like to start at the ends of the flowers here. This is going to be a little awkward, I apologize. Um, I like to start at the ends and work my way back down. So I'm going to start by putting a dab of glue here on the end. And I just went and picked up all these branches from my front yard. We had a windstorm um, yesterday. It, wind and rain and knocked all kinds of flowers down. And the reason I like to put the glue on the stem is that I can then I can set the flower on top and, and hold it and just kind of hold it with my finger from the top of the twist so I've got a good um, eighth to quarter of an inch between my finger and the hot glue so that'll that'll help you guys not get burned so if you wanna if you you want your kids to help you with this I would have them help you make the flowers and then you do the hot gluing so you don't have to worry about um, them getting hurt and then what I like to do is go along and keep adding flowers and then I'll put the um, the branches in my jar in my painted wine bottle and then I'll look at it from different sides and I'll see where I need to put some more so um, don't just cram all your flowers in if you have extras just hold on until you have them in the uh, jar and then you can um, you can fill in any spots that need it now let's go take a look at the finished project. As you can see, it looks bright and springy and full with all those branches and crepe paper flowers. I'll put a link to the crepe paper in the video description. If you enjoyed this, please check out our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them at www.papermart.com. Packaging for less.